Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The Presidential Review Committee on State-Owned Entities, which was set up in 2010, has finally released its report. Terence Creamer joins me to unpack some of the issues. Terence, welcome to Second Take. What are some of the highlights of this 219-page report? Well, this report, as you say, has been a long time in coming, set up in May 2010. Under uh, then businesswoman Ria Pierre's stewardship, she's now the National Police Commissioner, so it was a whole different lifetime. Um, and it's been a long time in, uh, in, in, you know, in its gestation. And I think there's been some frustration about how long it's taken, and we've seen a number of media leaks over the last few months uh, around this report. But the main real highlights of the report is that there's a, there's a vast number of these state-owned entities and they differ in character and size. But something like 715 uh, of these uh, across provinces, municipalities, national departments, and then the big ones that we all know about, like Eskom and Transnet and SAA. So there's a lot of them. There's no real coordination or master plan for all these uh, entities. Um, there's, there's no national legislation that governs all these entities. There's no rules that really govern the appointment of boards or chief executive officers. So it's, it's quite a hodgepodge at the moment. Um, and these, these have evolved for various reasons. And basically what the, um, the Presidential Review Committee tried to do is try to understand the, different, the nature of these different entities. And they really had to do it in a, in a sort of case study way. They couldn't go and look at every single one of these. So they, they took a sample and looked at some of the big ones, um, the big commercial entities such as Eskom and Transnet, and then looked at some of the, uh, even the entities that are sort of, um, that do uh, chapter nine sort, sort of work. And then they looked at uh, things that do, uh, agencies that do uh, uh, work for municipalities and provinces. So they've categorized them into these different uh, levels. The ones that I suppose capture the imagination of our uh, readers and our uh, viewers are really the commercial entities, and these are the, the, the ones that you know, either crowd out the private sector or are important clients to the private sector, so that they get a lot of attention. Um, and the, ba the basic uh, um, suggestion that comes out, over the, um, out of this report is that these need to be clustered together uh, under a single uh, executive authority or department. Now, some of that's already happened through the Department of Public Enterprises. They've got a good group uh, of large state-owned enterprises. But if you look at the genesis of that, it was all about really preparing those for privatization. And a lot of water has flown under that bridge, and there's not a, a lot of focus on privatizing entities such as Eskom, Transnet, and SAA. Instead, it's really about leveraging these entities for uh, both economic growth and development. And then there's a whole lot that sit underlying departments that are also large. So you've got Central Energy Fund under the Department of Energy, You've got Centec under communications. You've got companies that this government has interests in, like Telcom. So there's a view that these need to be clustered. They need to have a single uh, law, a single authority, uh, which oversees them. And then there would be also these some of these financial uh, entities, such as um, the Development Bank of Southern, Southern Africa and the IDC, which they say should be clustered separately and put up put under also another a single executive authority. So it's, it's quite major changes. There's also major changes to the way that governance should happen, the way boards should be appointed, and really wanting to consolidate these into, say, a, a, a clear handbook of rules of how these should be governed. What about privatization? Is that on the agenda? Well, I think it's not high on the agenda. Um, I don't think that's where the current government's uh, mind is at. But there was a view that some of these uh, don't logically fall within government, and there will be a case-by-case -case approach. So I think really what will happen is many of these 715, there's going to be a suggestion that where they're not you know, self-sustaining entities, these would need to be reabsorbed back into line departments or into municipalities or into the provinces. And where they are, do have a commercial rationale and they aren't sort of competing with the private sector, I think, and they're strategic, there'll be a view to have them you know, clustered together and have much more coordination and clarity on their roles. And I think they will probably mostly stay state-owned enterprises. Where there's just no strategic rationale for these uh, companies to remain in state uh, 
hands, I think there will be some disposals. But I don't think the, the report is not doesn't have a major focus on privatization. It's really about getting its head around what does what is the sort of state owned entity asset register look like, and how should we manage it better? What is now meant to happen on the implementation front? Well, now they've set up a uh, interministerial uh, group uh, it's probably, uh, of a number of ministers that will look at the recommendations that came out of this report as well as uh, th the cabinet input on the report and try and um, gel those together. And then over the next period, so there's uh, milestones that have been set for short-term interventions medium-term interventions and then long-term interventions, but really within a, a five-year window to try and get some of the, the big highlights and uh, because the cabinet has endorsed on, in the main the contents of the report, so to get uh, those highlights uh, into an implementation phase. And I imagine we're going to see some uh, of the uh, state owned entities starting to fall under either Department of uh, public enterprises or this new DFR focused uh, um, authority. Uh, I think that could happen. But I think there's, you know, th these are complex and it's really a case by case type approach that has to be taken because there are sometimes other shareholders involved. There is a view, you know, I think there needs to be some analysis around um, whether these entities really are, should reside within a state uh, ownership and control. So there's a, a lot to do on a case by case, micro level. So this is very much a, a macro sort of recommendation for all the state owned entities. I think there's been quite a lot of disappointment in, in the nature that people want some specifics. And actually it doesn't offer very many specifics around the big ticket ones like the SAAs and the telcoms, you know, which people want to know and the SABCs. Where are those going to fall and how are we going to govern these better? So it really is fairly uh, non-specific on these high profile entities, which is a disappointment. On the other hand, they were dealing with a, a really big group uh, of, of disparate entities. So they had to come up with a, a macro plan that you know could govern the management of all those different types of entities. And I think some sort of framework is now in place um, and it does give some guidance to this ministerial team to try and move into some sort of implementation. We definitely need to have a phase where state-owned entities play a more constructive role in society. Many, many South Africans see these as a drain on, uh, on the fiscus as well as on society, on the fiscus in the sense that we're doing a lot of bailouts at the moment, on society in that the service levels are very poor. So I think there's an acknowledgement in this report that, that that is a problem and that we need to start getting real value for the money. And where we can't, we need to look at real prop proper interventions or restructuring or disposals. Terence, thank you very much. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.